Helga, the point isn't to punish you. The point is to discuss these antisocial tendencies and examine possible strategies for improvement. Huh? I think that your behavior may be covering up other, more important issues. And I want to try to get to the root of the matter. Maybe uncover some emotions you may be hiding. Hiding? It's difficult to really know a person beyond ourselves. It is first difficult to see beyond ourselves at all, to expand beyond our limited perspective of the world. It is then difficult to listen and learn and understand a person without adding in our own hang-ups and meanings. It is, perhaps, impossible to fully understand a person, but that does not make the endeavor worthless, and even getting halfway there with someone is more than most can accomplish. Hey Arnold is notably a show about empathy, a show about understanding the complexities and pains of other people. It often goes about this by examining one-off or secondary characters. When we talk about Hey Arnold, we tend to talk about Stoop Kid and Pigeon Man, and for good reason. Those are fantastic episodes. But I think the episodes where we extend that empathy to the main cast of characters are just as important, if not more, as they allow us to not only understand them as people, but let us follow their growth over time. Originally airing on December 4th, 1999, Helga on the Couch is the 16th episode of Hey Arnold's fourth season, the 75th episode overall. It was written by show creator Craig Bartlett and directed by Christine Kolosov, an animator who would later work on shows like Oswald, Cat Scratch, The Mighty Bee, Metalocalypse, and The Venture Brothers. The PS118 Elementary School has managed to find room in their budget for a child psychiatrist two days of a week. Dr. Bliss, voiced by Kathy Baker, spends her first day shadowing the students and notices some odd behavior from one Helga G. Pataki. What? What are you looking at, football head? <laughs> Helga ends up punching Brainy in the hall, but instead of detention or a similar punishment, Helga is assigned a therapy session with Dr. Bliss. Helga is very resistant to the idea, mostly because she's afraid of revealing her long-lasting, obsessive, perhaps unhealthy crush on Arnold. She builds shrines to the boy. This shrink is going to think she's crazy, but also because the Pataki family have some old, dismissive ideas about therapy. We didn't have therapy when I was a kid. <laughs> That's obvious, Bob. I don't want you blabbing to some school shrink. We Patakis don't talk about things. We sweep them under the rug. Some things are best swept under the rug, Helga. Whatever you do, don't blab anything or they'll give us all a one-way ticket to the funny farm. You got it? I got it, Dad. This episode came out around the time when public perception of therapy, psychiatry, and mental health care were still shaking off some negative images. For many people then, and for some people even today, Mental health care is synonymous with barbaric treatments of people with mental illnesses. Decades of terrible, abusive mental wards, destructive treatments like shock therapy and outdated psychiatric ideas. These made mental health treatments a taboo topic because it meant you were quote unquote crazy. Look up some Kennedy family history if you want to have a really bad time. Figures like Joyce Brothers worked to improve psychiatry's image through the second half of the 20th century, but even if it was healthier and more helpful than it used to be, its perception in pop culture was usually that of the butt of the joke in a Woody Allen movie. Not to mention the swaths of horror films that use mental illness as motivation. All of this feeds into Helga's father's reaction to therapy. He's a very proud, very stupid man of a certain generation. But nothing he fears in this case is true. So Helga goes to therapy, her guard up, finding ways to antagonize Dr. Bliss. Helga, on the couch, comes two years after what many might consider the definitive therapy movie, Good Will Hunting, a story about a young, angry person who gets in trouble with an academic institution after beating up a guy, and in lieu of a greater punishment, is assigned a therapist. Their first session begins adversarially, with the kid poking and prodding the therapist's interests. Do you buy all these books retail and you send away for like a shrink kit that comes with all these volumes included do you like books hey i'm not here for a fucking book report they're your books why don't you read them i did i had to that must have taken you a long time yeah i did 
Did you read all those books? Most of them. Did you write any of them? No. How many books do you have to read to be a shrink? Mm, you have to read a lot of books. Like Matt Damon and Robin Williams in the movie, Helga and Dr. Bliss's relationship soon becomes an exchange of information, with Helga learning more about the therapist until the conversation naturally pivots into a discussion of herself. No tricks, just organic connections. I can't speak as to how professional this actually is. I'm sure there's some Therapist Reacts YouTubers who could point out why a therapist shouldn't do such and such and so and so. But as a story, this feels right. Helga is super protective of herself, of her feelings, and she doesn't drop that for anybody. Dr. Bliss is attempting to prove herself as a safe, relatable person to open up to, but it's difficult. This isn't our first time exploring Helga's home life. We already know it's pretty rotten. Her father is an asshole. Her mother is an alcoholic. Her older sister is constantly given support and praise while Helga feels ignored. There is a possibility of exaggeration as Helga lays it out for Dr. Bliss here. We even get a segment with a laugh track. But we know it's not that far off from the truth. Did you pick up my winter coat from the cleaners? What? I Oh, Helga, I forgot. All the excitement. Your sister being home from Alaska. But don't worry, because the weatherman said that it should stay above freezing for most of the day. And here we see this neglectful parenting extending to Helga's preschool days, forcing her to become self-sufficient at a much too early age. And then we get to see the first time she meets Arnold, how nice and kind he was right off the bat, and how this led to her love-hate obsession with the boy and how she was being perceived. It's a feedback loop. Helga feels she has to be tough and defensive because of her family situation, but Arnold breaks down those defenses. So the girl overcorrects and treats Arnold worse than anyone. And then she feels bad about this and toughens up and things get harder and harder and worse and worse for her. She's caught in a cycle. She's her own worst enemy. And to break through that cycle, she's gonna have to admit her feelings. I want to have a perfume named after us, Arnold and Helga! I love Arnold! <laughs> Satisfied! Now we're getting somewhere. Helga on the Couch is show creators Craig Bartlett's favorite episode, who felt it was important to show kids why Helga was the way she was. By that time, season 4, I had done more than 150 Hey Arnold stories and I felt that I knew Helga better than most of my neighbors. And a lot of that is because Francesca Smith, who voiced Helga, was so good and we had all been working on Helga together for years and we trusted each other to come up with material like that. Everyone who worked on it was in love with Helga. Also, Couch was another opportunity to have Helga confess her love to Arnold in a huge emotional blowout. The only confession left was for Helga to tell Arnold face to face, and we were saving that for the movie. On the wall of Dr. Bliss's office are renditions of actual real life paintings by Edward Hopper, who just might be one of my top five favorite painters. Helga recognizes one of them, 1943's Summertime, and she has a few thoughts. Nice picture. You like Edward Hopper? I do. Yeah, he's okay. He's a little simple, though. And what's his deal with women, anyway? That's pretty astute for a fourth grader. Hopper's paintings do often feature women, modeled by his wife, Josephine, a talented painter herself. Hopper's women are often alone, sometimes alone in a crowd, but usually just alone, in an open space. The mood is often melancholic. Summertime is different in subtle ways. Painted at the end of World War II, with the United States having pulled itself out of the Great Depression, summertime feels much more optimistic, less wistful, than Hopper's usual work. The woman, her dress, new and perfect, steps into a bright day, perhaps the first bright day in a long time. It's easy to imagine her stepping away from a darker time in her life. She can go anywhere. She can be anything. Helga, likewise, leaves Dr. Bliss's office with a renewed sense of self, more confident and kind, having gotten her crush on Arnold off her chest. There's still tons of work to do, but things are looking better than they ever have been. It's not Hopper's summertime visually, but it holds the same spirit. Helga walking into her own 
glorious sun.